What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. So this will be a spoiler free review for Radio Silence's Abigail, which comes out this Friday. As I just stated, it's directed by Radio Silence and it is starring Melissa Barrera, Dan Stevens, Catherine Newton, William Catlett, Kevin Durant, Angus Cloud, Alicia Ware, John Carlo Esposito, and several others. Now it's also written by Steven Shields and Guy Busick. The story is revolving around a group of would-be criminals who kidnap a 12-year-old ballerina daughter of a powerful underworld figure all they have to do is all they have to do to collect a 50 million dollar ransom is watch the girl overnight in an isolated mansion the captors start to dwindle one by one and they discover to their mounting horror that they're locked inside with no normal little girl now abigail is one hell of a banging vampire flick and because horror has been so shaky with its recent releases it's no shock that i ended up having the most fun with this movie compared to other horror offerings that have come and gone so far in 2024 that's not to say that this is the best horror film i've seen all year because we still have long legs maxine cuckoo etc but yes radio silence has cooked up another good horror comedy with abigail that leans back into their ready or not territory and while it has its shortcomings it's still well made overall our story revolves around this group of criminals joey frank peter rickles dean and sammy this all of this is not their real names all of which have a very shady past but have come together for this alleged payday while most of this group is forgettable without their charismatic personalities to keep them afloat and engaging joey is carrying the bulk of this story it's made very clear from the opening sequence that she's the main character her primary struggles just come down to learning how to be an effective mother dealing with addiction and not overcomplicating how to be present in her child's life she's relatable in that regard and easy to feel sympathy for since she comes off as the most sane person in this situation honestly what makes joey so intriguing and compelling is the fact that in comparison to everyone else around her she seems like the most withdrawn from the group so that naturally just made her more attractive and melissa barrera does a great job already playing someone who's detached because joey is very reminiscent to sam carpenter who she played in the screen franchise which is also directed by radio silence for scream scream 5 and scream 6. Abigail also is exploring this parallel between Joey and our titular little girl since Abigail has some of her own parental problems. It was an effective way to highlight Joey's growth over time by exploring this parallel. As for the others, this screenplay doesn't do them any favors when it comes to giving me a reason to care about them. Their development simply is non-existent. I couldn't give a rat's ass about anyone else in this movie. However, music and shields make up for this by giving everyone time to shine with at least one comedic standout moment the jokes land every time there wasn't a single one that failed to make me chuckle a lot of the jokes in here are probably going to make some of you laugh yourself to the point of you might want to just start have like you might start to have stomach pains if you ever last laugh so hard that your stomach starts to hurt i think abigail will get the job done because it really is very funny admittedly abigail does rely on the humor more than being straight up terrifying and it does work for it embracing how silly and goofy its own concept is went a long way for this story i may be alone on this one but abigail felt like radio silence's deranged take on home alone if kevin McAllister's parents really hated him just think about that for a second i can't be the only one that thought that one aspect of the screenplay that does not work if you've seen the trailers is how this movie does indeed try to dangle a twist that the trailer already let us in on. Busick and Shields keep you guessing by tossing in a name that has all of the kidnappers afraid and you start to doubt who the villain is. But around like 20 minutes or 30 minutes in, we're reminded, of course, of who the villain is. It all starts to come together in a way that's definitely more effective if you haven't seen the trailer still there are several twists that you won't pick up on right away but after watching you realize the writers were subtle with their clues a commendable quality since it could have been obvious with certain revelations and then they still treat it like a shock factor which abigail i'm happy to report does not do abigail does rely on exposition dumps but not in a beat me over the head with the obvious way it's mostly letting us in on further details about our kidnappers so it was effective in that regard some of the vampire lore did seem slightly confusing but i'm sure a rewatch will make me feel better about that i was very satisfied with the fact that the lore of the vampires was not something that we constantly took breaks to have spewed to us we kind of just rolled with it and what was unfolding on screen spoke 
spoke for itself. The vampire lore was made evident more so through actions and not just, okay, let's sit down, take a break, and talk about how vampires work. There are sequences where they're talking about vampires, but not excessively going over the lore and all the ins and outs of vampires, which could have become tiring, and I'm glad Abigail did not do that. It's a very fast-paced film that establishes urgency from the opening sequence with how it cuts back and forth between Abigail and her eventual kidnappers. The urgency exists throughout and it only lets up when we have these few intimate moments between Joy and Abigail mostly. It was a well-paced film overall. Melissa Barrera and the entire cast I would say are phenomenal, especially Dan Stevens who is devouring every scene he is in as this arrogant, selfish individual. And then you have Alicia Ware, who is also a standout. She delivers a wonderful performance as this innocent but sinister little girl. That switch from innocent child to diabolical fiend was enough to keep me engaged in her performance. And the way she delivers her lines with such confidence and conviction really impressed me. Barrera is excelling at portraying a character that is very, again, reminiscent to Sam Carpenter. But Joy has her own distinctions that Barrera captures wonderfully. Catherine Newton is an absolute delight as Sammy. Sammy is going to be a lovable character for many thanks to her. Like I stated, what's saving these thin characters is great talent and Radio Silence just being competent directors. I thought Abigail was vi visually pleasing and satisfying. I love the warm color palette that was featured throughout. I do say, I do want to say that I think they did not make great use of the overall setting. That mansion was gorgeous and I don't think they really made proper use of it. The score by Brian Tyler kept things suspenseful, kept me on edge, was really effective at heightening some of the emotions during that third act, which is quite entertaining. That third act is the best, best, best last ha last half of the film or the best half of the film, I would say, is that third act. All in all, I would say Abigail is a solid seven out of ten. It's not breaking any new ground when it comes to vampire movies. It's a bloody good time the special effects are freaking phenomenal amazing special effects uh really solid performances from everyone it's just a good time a good campy horror comedy that doesn't take itself too seriously knows what it needs to be and it excels at that quite well job well done to radio silence on another banger i'm going to give it a 7 out of 10 if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notification you can never miss a video in the description i'll have links on my social media accounts i'm on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course to let me know if there's any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video